we will proceed with the autonomic nervous system and uh, the this unit is uh, containing varieties of the lectures so the drugs acting on the autonomic nervous system it uh, is containing introduction to autonomic nervous system the organization of autonomic nervous system and neurohumeral transmission neurohumeral uh, the transmission continued and pharmacology of the neurotransmitters adrenoceptors and agonists and antagonists adrenergic neuron blockers and uh, of course the uh, cholinergic receptor antagonists and agonists the data coid pharmacology is also covered under this thing and 5ht and its antagonists eicosanoids and angiotensin bradykinin and calidin so these are all the syllabus of your unit 2 so uh, we will try to finish it uh, uh, with 14 or uh, 15 classes okay and coming to first uh, we have to know the basic anatomy especially the certain features of this particular uh, uh topic is concerned and uh, the sympathetic uh, like that, uh, the sympathetic division of autonomic nervous system is called as thoraco lumbar outflow but it has the input from higher brain centers like hypothalamus and limbic cortex that's the thoraco lumbar because the preganglionic sympathetic nerves cell bodies in the intermediate lateral column of the spinal cord T1 and L3. So most of the nerves are originating from the spinal cord. That's uh, the, the thoracic one and lumbar three vertebrae. The nerves are arising from these particular places. The efferent fibers exist uh, with the ventral roots of the spinal uh, nerves and then leave a white ramus which leads to ganglion. So what is a ganglion? We will have. the familiarity with the certain terms like this ganglion etc in future uh, the thing is uh, the ganglion is a collection of cell bodies of post ganglionic uh, neurons it's a collection so uh, the pre ganglionic nerves may stimulate several post ganglionic uh, nerves which rejoins the spinal nerve by the way of gray ramus so we will learn out of what is a gray ramus and uh, this what is a spinal nerve everything in future so that you can understand it in a better fashion so the ganglia are located in, what is a ganglia it's a junction of two neurons so the ganglia anyway i am going to show you the diagrammatic representation otherwise it's very difficult to understand so there are 22 pairs of the paravertebral ganglia located on either side of the vertebral column the upper most ganglia are fused to form the superior and middle and cervical ganglia and the stellate ganglion which is located at the level of c6 the preganglionic neuron may travel up to down several uh, dermatal dermatal levels and before synapsing with one or more post ganglionic neurons so paravertebral pre 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 vertebral the celiac superior superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric ganglions are important here and the adrenal medulla is also one of the important uh, part in case of the uh, autonomic nervous system this is also derived from the neural crest tissue of the functions in much way as ganglion throughout throat put uh, is circulating epinephrine and norepinephrine the parasympathetic it's also known as cranio sacral division has its origin in the nuclei of cranial nerves 3 7 9 and 10 as as well as the s yes, 2 to 4 nerve roots the preganglionic fiber, fibers travel almost all the end of the organ before synapsing the ganglion and enteric nervous system it's also of course there are there is no what you call as very specific enteric nervous system both parasympathetic sympathetic and uh, certain somatic nerves make this enteric uh, nervous system and uh, it consists of the networks interconnected ganglia and uh, nerve fibers largely contained with myentric and uh, it's also known as urbaches flexus and submucosal or mesner's flexus the system exerts local control over 
GI secretion. So as the name indicates, the enteric nervous system, it is controlling the GI secretion, motility, blood vessel tone and the fluid trans transport. It is subject to the uh, control by sympathetic and parasympathetic and both uh, the central nervous system inputs. So the nervous system is mainly consisting of the brain and the spinal cord. So spinal cord is an elongated form of the brain and of course the neurons are the subunit of the uh, brain and they are the cells of the brain where, which is the integral part of the nervous system. And uh, most complex organ of course the nervous system is a most complicated organ and accounts for 3% of the total body weight means the brain and entire nerves which has traveled throughout the body consists of 3%. A person who is uh, weighing 50 kg may have the 1.5 kg of the nervous system. It's an approximate, that's all. And it uh, provides a swift, brief responses to stimuli and through temporary modification in the activity of the other organ system. So the central nervous system or the autonomic nervous system may be the both entire the system is taking care of the overall functions of the body and as usual it is uh, nervous system is uh, divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system so central nervous system is uh, consisting of both uh, two parts one is the spinal cord and also the brain so the spinal cord is also a part of the central nervous system. Once again, afferent means sensory nerves and efferent nerves and internal nerves. So the spinal cord is containing both the sensory, motor and intermediate nerves. Whereas the brain contains hindbrain, midbrain and forebrain. So we will study the details of this thing in the central nervous system pharmacology. Of course, the another unit of this particular topic is concerned. Whereas the peripheral nervous system, it's containing the somatic and autonomic. So the peripheral nervous system, apart from the brain, somatic nerves, which are once again afferent and see, please remember that afferent means away from the organ, that's a sensory nerve. Efferent means towards the organ, that's the motor nerves. Motor nerves carry the impulse to make certain functions. Whereas the apparent nerves or the sensory nerves uh, carry the impulses from the organ to the brain and there it is processed and certain commands are given through the different nerves. Of course, the, we are going to learn this autonomic pharmacology in which uh, it is classified into sympathetic and parasympathetic. Of course, the enteric nervous system is also the part of the autonomic pharmacology is concerned and in the brain the, and the and center this nervous system varieties of the structures are there and the dendrites are the one which receive information but say axon hillock it's a process the information and axis or axon or node of rana wire it's propagate the information means uh, the synapse means convey the information to another nerve or it's also the junction and ganglion is a collection of cell bodies located outside the central nervous system the spinal ganglia or dorsal root ganglia contain the cell bodies sensory neurons entering the spinal cord at the region and uh, the a nuclei, a collection of cell bodies located inside the central nervous system. So, the nervous system includes all the neural tissues of the body. Means it's a very, very huge terminology. It contains all the neurons of the body. Then, basic functional unit of the nervous system are the individual cells called as the neurons. Neurons are the basic most basic units of the nervous system and neuroglia are supporting the cells that separate and protect the neurons neuroglia and we'll see it in the diagram provide a structural framework for neural tissue 
they act as the phagocytic cells in the central nervous system they also regulate the composition of the interstitial fluid interstitial fluid of the exoplasma and neuroglia are also called as the glial cells so so many terminologies you should be very fa familiar and uh, many more neuro neuroglia are there the neurons are there so central nervous system it consists of the brain and spinal cord the whereas the pns or the peripheral nervous system neural tissue outside the central nervous system whereas the central nervous system is consisting of majorly brain and the spinal cord the peripheral nervous system contains bundles of axon of the nerve fiber very the information and motor commands to the peripheral nervous system and these are called as the peripheral nerves or simply they are called as the nerves and of course the cranial nerves spinal nerves are the two type of the nerves so 12% of the uh, cranial nerves are there means uh, the olfactory oculomotor and trigeminal trochlear and many more nerves are there of course you may be remembering the 12% of the cranial nerves and some cranial nerves are sensory some motor and some are mixed or both and the peripheral nervous system Uh, afferent divisions bring sensory information from the receptors maybe pain receptor or if it is a voluntary uh, nerves or the non autonomic nerves then it brings the sensory stimuli suppose uh, the skin is having the what you call as the information from the uh, soma or body somatic nervous system and the receptors are sensory structures that detect changes in the internal environment and respond to the presence of specific nuclei and afferent divisions carry the motor commands to the effector afferent means sensory afferent means please remember that afferent away from the organ it is sensory carrying the impulses from the organ whereas efferent means it brings the impulse to the organ for bringing some change or the secretion like that and the efferent division includes the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system and uh, the somatic nervous system its control the skeletal muscle contractions it is usually voluntary or sometimes it is uh, involuntary also whereas the autonomic nervous system it is involuntary nervous system visceral motor system provides the autonomic regulation of the smooth muscle contraction cardiac muscles and glandular secretions all these are controlled by the autonomic nervous system so once again it is classified into sympathetic and parasympathetic division so these sympathetic and parasympathetic do act uh, as the antagonistic to each other if one system tries to upper hand whereas the other system try to curb it so they are acting as the antagonistic to each other so here we can see that the sympathetic pathway this is the central nervous system which is consisting of the brain and spinal cord this is the uh, cholinergic sympathetic pathway whereas the acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter that is secreted in the autonomic ganglia here then most of this thing then later the it is elongated neuron adrenergic post ganglionic neuron whereas this is the cholinergic post preganglionic neuron most of the preganglionic neurons are cholinergic in nature because it is the neurotransmitter secreted is acetylcholine whereas the depending upon the type of the nervous system the norepinephrine will be secreted in the sympathetic pathway and the adrenergic receptor alpha or beta are present on the target tissue what are the target tissues many tissues do have both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation 
so the receptor adrenergic receptors are classified into alpha and beta whereas the cholinergic receptor are classified into a muscarinic and nicotinic type of the receptor so once again the coming to the parasympathetic pathway how the nervous stimulus is carried is of course the central nervous system is the one which processes all the impulses which are coming from the periphery whereas the preganglionic fiber cholinergic preganglionic fiber is very long and it is very near to the inner uh, innervation and cholinergic nicotinic receptors are present in the post ganglionic uh, autonomic ganglia and the neurotransmitter secreted in the cystalcholine and it is the effector organ maybe so it may be a heart or the intestine smooth muscles or the salivary gland smooth muscles so both of these uh, do contain most of the organs do contain both parasympathetic and sympathetic neuro uh, pathways and we'll see what is the difference between these two in future so this is the overview of the nervous system and uh, here you can see that brain and the cranial nerves are originating from the brains and the spinal cord of course it's from the brain to the last vertebrae so these are all the peripheral nerves peripheral nerves central nervous system it is uh, processing always the higher order functions such as memory learning and intelligence central nervous system whereas the sensory information with the uh, afferent division and the efferent divisions afferent means the sensory whereas the motor commands are given through the motor nerves well, once again the motor nerves are classified as the somatic nerves and autonomic nerves whereas the autonomic classified into sympathetic and parasympathetic so both of these are acting on the smooth muscles cardiac muscles and the glands whereas the somatic nerves are only affecting on the skeletal muscles whereas the sensory information or afferent division it is classified into special sensory receptors or the somatic sensory receptors usually the this uh, special sensory receptors provide sensation of smell taste vision balance and hearing these are all the inputs of afferent inputs whereas the somatic sensory receptor with the usual work are the skeletal muscles the joints skin surface then provide position sense and touch so whenever you are, you are take a small needle and prick on your body that is processed through the somatic sensory receptor to the sensory information afferent division then it is being processed in the higher centers of the brain then it will give a motor command so that you are going to with hand with withdraw your hand because it is made up of the skeletal muscles so whereas the visceral uh, sensory receptors are also present in the intestine and other organs which are also uh, the sensory in nature and they are also produced uh, they are also processed in the central nervous system whereas the parasympathetic or sympathetic outflow is uh, being elicited by this particular system and if you take the what you call as the uh, microscopic view then it is the fascicle of course this is the, and these are all the axons here basic what you call, how it's a neuron this is a neuron it's the most basic unit of the central nervous system it is containing the cell body whereas the single elongated axon is present and several short branch dendrites so here you can see how it, how the neuron looks so these are all the dendrites means branch like tree branch like uh, this thing are dendritic spines this, the nucleus is called as the dendrite whereas these are all the dendritic uh, spines and as usual like other cells this is containing the nucleolus nucleolus nucleus nucleolus whereas the it is also containing the nucleus and in which the nucleolus is there whereas the 
nissel bodies the end, rough endoplasmic reticulum and pre ribosomes they are formed as the nissel bodies and apart from this one the storehouse or energy house is the mitochondria are also present in the cytoplasm of the neuron whereas the axon hillock this portion is known as the axon hillock it is the we can call the neck of the neuron is called as the axon hillock the golgi apparatus and uh, neurofilaments etc are also present this is the presynaptic cell whereas the elongated part is known as the axon here so if you take this particular uh, cell as a unit then you have got the perikaryon this uh, fluid and other thing it is uh, called as a perikaryon and it is the nucleus so entire thing is called as the cell body cell body and the dendritic spines are here and dendrites so this continuation is the axon and the end part is called as the telodendria here you can see that this which connect with the post synaptic cell are called as the telodendria and the this is the initial segment and the synapse is transmitted from this axon and reaches the nerve ending so this depending upon the type of the you what you call as the nervous system whether parasympathetic or sympathetic uh, the entire nervous system will have the neuron as one of the basic unit so these are all the contents of a neurons